Smokey Robinson was born William Robinson Jr. in the North End area of Detroit, Michigan. His uncle Claude, who he thought of as a godfather, would give him the nickname Smokey Joe when he was just a child. In Detroit, he would grow up with Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross as childhood friends who he played neighborhood games with. Smokey would actually meet Aretha at five years old when he would go to her house to play with her older brother Cecil after her family first moved to Detroit. They would be very close friends, often talking all the time up until her passing. He attended Northern High School, where he was an above average student and a great athlete, although his main interest was music. So much so that in 1955, he would form the first lineup of a doo wop group named The Five Chimes. Two years later, the group would rename themselves The Matadors and begin touring around Detroit venues. They would change their name one last time to The Miracles which they are known as today. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles would go on to meet songwriter Barry Gordy in August 1957. While on an audition with Barry Gordy, Smokey had bought along with him a big 10-inch notebook with a hundred songs he had wrote while in high school. Barry was said to be so impressed with Smokey's vocals and even more impressed with his talented songwriting skills. Now at this time, Barry Gordy had not launched Motown Records, so this all took place in his converted garage. Smokey says that he was mentored by Barry Gordy and that Barry always stressed the importance of always wanting to have a good song right at the start. Smokey would go on to become one of five of Barry's first employees at Motown, saying that they did everything, including boxing up the records, putting the labels on them, shipping them out, and everything else. With Barry's help, the Miracles released their first song, Got a Job, which would be an answer song to a popular group's The Silhouettes hit single, Get a Job. This would be the beginning of a long and successful collaboration. The Miracles became one of the first acts signed to the label. I mainly came tonight to support Smokey and the Miracles because the Miracles were the very first group on Motown and uh, I have had such great uh, success with the Miracles, not only just them themselves and Smokey Robinson, but the fact that they were responsible for Diana Ross and the Supremes coming to the label, Stevie Wonder, and so many other people. Once Smokey got a hit, everybody started running to Motown. <laughs> And in late 1960, the group recorded their first hit single, Shop Around, which became Motown's first million selling hit record, although Smokey would talk about a performance at the Apollo where the promoter called Barry and requested his money back. You know, we first played the Apollo, the guy called and told Barry he wanted his money back. <laughs> Smokey was so talented that between 1960 and 1970, he would produce 26 top 40 hits with the Miracles as lead singer, also as chief songwriter and producer. If it hadn't been for The Temptations, I probably would have never written My Girl in my life. I got sunshine. My Girl. I play my girl in our live concerts, and uh, we go to countries where the primary language is not even English. And we don't even have to start singing my girl. As soon as they hear, boom, 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 they know what's getting ready to happen. They jump over, they start cheering, they start singing. So uh, it has become a wonderful song for me. People have asked me many times, well, don't you wish you had kept that for you in the miracles? No, because The Temptations, my brothers. I had written uh, some, some songs for The Temptations, and the first hit that I had on them was a thing called The Way You Do The Things You Do, on which I used Eddie Kendricks. 
to sing the lead vocal. But by 1969, Smokey wanted to retire from touring and from his duties as Motown's vice president to focus on raising his two children that he had had with his wife Claudette, who he had married in 1959. However, the success of the group's Tears of a Clown made Smokey stay with the group until 1972. His last performance with the group, however, was in July 1972 in Washington, D.C. After a year of retirement, Smokey announced his comeback with the release of the Smokey album in 1973. The album included the Miracles tribute song, Sweet Harmony, and the hit song, Baby Come Close. Baby Come Close, put your hand in 1974, Smokey's second album, Pure Smokey, was released, but it failed to produce hits because Smokey was struggling to compete with his former collaborators, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, and Eddie Kendrick, as all three of the artists had multiple hit singles during this period. During this time, Smokey and Claudette had been married for 27 years. However, life would take a devastating downward spiral spiral when due to the death of his father he became dependent on cocaine well, so i guess you sprinkle crack into your weed and smoke it that way no it wasn't crack thank oh, god it was, god just, it was oh, before, just before crack so just powder okay. thank god it was before crack okay <laughs> yeah. but yeah it was cocaine you know you said after that, i started doing that yeah yeah well you described yourself as a walking corpse during that time yeah i got to that point I got to that point where I was just walking around and, uh, you know, I'm 5'11", and I'm walking around, I weigh 120 pounds, and I can't, I don't have any belts or any pants or anything like that that fit me, and I have to take a pin, a safety pin, and pin my pants on this side and on this side and wear my shirts outside so huh. you couldn't see the pins holding my pants up and all that, and I was in dire straits. Yeah. It was ridiculous, and I hated me. Around this time, he would also find out that he had a child coming with a woman named Candy, who he had had a long time extramarital affair with. He would also say that he felt estranged from his wife Claudette during this time even though she tried to help him and that he felt closer to Candy because she knew and loved his father. Where am I, where am I getting off into all this ridiculous drugs and all that you know and then you know but after it was over and after I went through it and after I was prayed for and I was healed and God healed me from that I um I figured it out you know I was I was I was I was going through turmoil at home Personally, you know, with, with my wife, it wasn't her fault. It was my fault. Well, right. Because didn't you have a child outside your marriage yes. around this time? Yes, I and did. And then you actually told your wife that. Yes. And that, and that caused a divorce. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She had always told me that's the one thing she said, you know, I've been on the road with you. I've been on the road out there. You know, I was on the road for the first 10 years. Y'all on the road. She said, I know what happens out there. Just don't bring me no babies. Don't bring me no diseases and don't bring me no babies. She said, I'm not going to question what you do hmm. because I only want to know. And so then, I, my 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 youngest son was born, yeah. and I had to eventually tell her. So she put me out. <laughs> so yeah. I don't blame her. I mean, you know. Smokey would also tell the story about how a friend of his named Leon came backstage after his performance and asked him what he was doing to himself, saying he looked like a ghost. His skin was turning green, his eyes being sunken into his head, and he was wasting away. Leon stayed and prayed for him all that night and the next day. And the next evening, he insisted Smokey go to a place called Ablaze Ministry. So he came to my house one night, and he looked at me and he said, man, he said, you look terrible. He said, I heard you were doing this, but I haven't been able to find you. And you've been ducking me. You don't ever duck me. And you've been ducking me. You've been ducking everybody. Why are you doing this? So I, I don't, I'm fine, man. You know, because you know, you're in denial and all that. You know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm cool. No, you're not. He said, sit down. I'm going to pray for you. Pray for me? Yeah, I'm going to pray for you. He prayed for me probably five hours without stopping. <laughs> you know, just straight. 
without stopping. He just prayed for me. And he said, I'm staying here tonight, man, and tomorrow night I'm taking you to a prayer service that I go to. Okay, because I was done with me anyway. I could not stand me at that point. In May 2002, Smokey married Francis Gladney. These days, Smokey is still going strong. Him and Francis split their time between LA and Las Vegas. He recently released an album called Gasms and tours frequently to sold out venues. Motown became an extremely popular label beginning in the late 50s thanks to Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson due to the duo writing and recording some of the greatest hits in history. 60 decades later, the two are still best friends and Smokey Robinson calls Barry his mentor. Smokey has been awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and has been inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's also been awarded a Grammy for his hit song Just to See Her from his Heartbeat album. He's also been awarded the Society of Singers Lifetime Achievement Award and BET Lifetime Achievement Award as as well as a host of other accolades. Smokey Robinson is one of the most gifted and influential singer-songwriters in the 20th century. Whether writing for fellow artists or performing with the miracles, Smokey created songs that were supremely balanced between the joy and pain of love. This has led to him being called the American's greatest living poet and to be known as a permanent fixture in music history. Thank you for watching.